And if you allow resentment to come into your heart, you will lose control over your destiny. Resentment will turn to bitterness and bitterness to hatred and hatred to murder. That's what happened to Esau in Genesis 27, 41. From that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme, I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. We've all had people who've done bad things to us. We all have people who failed to do good for us. We've all had things we wish we'd gotten that we didn't get. But when you don't deal with the sources of resentment, you will end up with the results of resentment. It was a bright, sunny morning as two brothers, Dominic and Andy Ongwen, walked along the road on their way to school. Growing up in the Amuru district of Uganda, they came from a family of poor, illiterate farmers. But the two boys were learning now, and they had high hopes for their future. But in one instant, those hopes were shattered. Without any warning, soldiers from the rebel group known as the Lord's Resistance Army swooped in and grabbed Dominique and Andy. Before the boys could cry out, they were gone, sent to a training camp that was intended to turn them into bloodthirsty and ruthless child soldiers. Since 1987, the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, has used terror to fight the government of Uganda. It's estimated that 100,000 people have been killed by the LRA. 60,000 people have been abducted, and 1.5 million people have had to flee from their homes. Entire villages have been annihilated, and the children from those villages recruited as child soldiers. That was the future Dominic and Andy now faced. Abducted and tortured, the two brothers had their lives stolen by the LRA. Then one day, an unexpected opportunity came up for them to flee. A clear path of escape opened, and Andy took it, running to freedom and a new life. Andy escaped and made it back to his village where he lives today, surrounded by family and friends. But for reasons we may never know, Dominique remained behind. As he grew up, Dominique became just like the soldiers who'd captured him. He became ruthless and violent and is accused of slaughtering hundreds of Ugandans without mercy. He gained more influence in the LRA until he eventually became one of their most important leaders. But then he was captured. He was sent to trial before the International Criminal Court. And on February 4th, 2021, Dominique Ongwen was convicted of 61 crimes consisting of both crimes against humanity and war crimes. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison where he remains today. Two brothers who started out on the same path ended up in very different destinations. They both started out in captivity. They both suffered the same brutal bondage, but they made different choices along the road of life. They took different paths. One road led to life and freedom, the other to death. And when you think about it, in many ways, we are all just like Dominique and Andy. We've all been hurt by the evil that others have done to us. We've had something valuable taken from us. We've all been held captive by sin and Satan. But no matter what people did to you, no matter what people did not do for you, you still have a choice. You can break free and live or stay bound and die. That's the powerful truth we're going to learn in today's sermon titled, The Stronghold of Resentment. As we dig deeper into God's word, we're going to study the clear choice that faces every one of us today, life or death, resentment or forgiveness, bondage or freedom. We're going to learn that with Christ's help, we can all be free.
Almighty and everlasting Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask you to open the eyes of our understanding today and give us light and truth that we might see clearly the path of freedom and life you have laid out for us. For you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Lord, give us the courage and the grace, the power from above to follow your path of life and escape from the bondage. No matter what's been done to us, no matter what has been held back from us, give us the ability to choose life and restoration and forgiveness today. We submit to you now, we bind every voice of the devil that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to speak to our hearts and give us grace, light, life, and liberty. We thank you by faith in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I want to take a moment and invite you to join your faith with mine. Put your hand on your chest and pray after me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Truth For Today. I'm so glad you're joining me as we continue our sermon series, Strongholds. For the last few weeks, we've been studying God's Word to discover His path to demolish strongholds in our lives. And today, we're going to learn the truth about the stronghold of resentment so that we can overcome and walk in freedom. Now, to help us learn the truth for today, we're going to look at the story of a man named Esau from the Old Testament. His story is found in Genesis 25 to 33. Now, parts of his story are going to be familiar to many of us, but the interesting thing we're going to discover today is that Esau faced the stronghold of resentment head on, and he overcame. He was bitter in life, but he made choices that turned his resentment to restoration. So let's look at his story today and discover three truths about the stronghold of resentment. And first, let's look at some background history about this famous man. Esau grew up with his father Isaac and his mother Rebekah and his junior brother Jacob. He was the grandson of Abraham. Yet in spite of his place in this powerful, important family, most of us think of Esau as a bad person. If you know anything about him, it's that he's sold his birthright inheritance to his younger brother Jacob for a soup, for a bowl of lentils. But what you may not know is that Esau is actually a great guide for all of us as we navigate through the challenge of overcoming resentment. For you see, Esau was initially overcome by the stronghold of resentment. The Bible says he was angry and bitter about how he was treated by his family. At the beginning, he embraced resentment and even planned to murder his junior brother Jacob. But in the end, he overcame resentment. And in his story, we find the truth that will set us free as well. Our story begins with Esau in the middle of a turnaround in his life. He made that foolish decision to sell his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup. But then he seems to be in a place of coming back. He seems to be in a place of restoration. He wants to put that behind him. He's making a comeback and he's trying to do what he needs to do to get his destiny back on track. So when his father Isaac calls Esau and tells him that he wants to pronounce a blessing on his life, Esau thinks, my breakthrough has finally come. Isaac tells Esau to go out and hunt some wild meat and come and prepare his favorite dish for him. Then Isaac says, after I eat it, I promise to pronounce a blessing on you as my firstborn son. But as Esau goes out in obedience to his father, his very own mother and his junior brother Jacob begin to plot against him. While Esau is out doing the right thing, obeying his father, the rest of the family is secretly doing the wrong thing. They conspire to rob him of his blessing. And that brings us to our first truth today, the sources of resentment. Resentment can come from many different sources, but oftentimes the most common is what other people did to me. You see, Esau comes back from hunting. 
He's getting his nice dish ready for his dad. He goes in to serve his father and get the blessing. But there he discovers the horrible truth of what others have done to him. Jacob had gone in ahead of him, disguised himself as Esau, and stolen the blessing. So now Jacob has cheated Esau out of his birthright and his blessing. That's why in Genesis 27, 36, Esau exclaimed, No wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has cheated me twice. First he took my right as the firstborn, and now he's stolen my blessing. And here's what we can learn from his story. Resentment begins when you focus on the bad things other people have done to you. That's why resentment is a temptation for every single one of us. No matter who you are, everyone on this earth has been the victim of evil that other people have done against us. For the fact is there will always be offenses. There will always be people who are out to do you harm. In fact, in Luke 17, 1, Jesus said, there will always be temptations to sin. And that's why it's so important for us to learn how to overcome the stronghold of resentment. If you cannot learn to forgive those who wrong you, you will continually stumble in life. If you keep visiting the wounds from your past over and over again, you'll end up destroyed by the stronghold of resentment. That's the lesson we can learn from the unfortunate death of James Garfield. James Garfield was actually the 20th president of the United States. He ruled way back in 18. 1881. But he didn't rule as president for long. Just seven months after he took office, Garfield was in Washington, D.C. when an assassin attacked him and shot him in the back. Fortunately, the bullet didn't strike any vital organs. In fact, the gunshot wound was not serious at all. James Garfield survived the gunshot wound, and he could have lived on and on, except for one Simple problem. When Garfield was shot, the bullet remained lodged in his back. It actually did not pose any threat to his life, and the doctors could have sewn up the wound and let Garfield go on living with the bullet in his back. But the doctors were so worried about the bullet, they began to probe and operate on President Garfield to try to get the bullet out. For weeks, the doctors kept going in and reopening the wound, looking for the bullet, trying to extract it. They kept trying to get the bullet out, but they couldn't find it. And eventually, President James Garfield died. Not from the bullet, but from an infection from the doctors going in over and over and over, probing the wound. They would not leave it alone. And in the same way, the offense done against you will not kill you. But if you continue to probe it over and over and over again, it will destroy you. Because you can't move forward while you're looking backward. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 3.13, but I do one thing, I forget everything that is behind me and I look forward to that which is ahead of me. So the first source of resentment is what others did to you. The second is this, what others didn't do for me. Not only did Jacob do evil to Esau, but as a result of that, his father refused to do good to him. Isaac failed to give Esau the blessing of the firstborn. In Genesis 27, 37, Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give you, my son? We may not understand the ancient Hebrew customs of inheritance and blessings, but one thing we can all understand is being overlooked when blessings are distributed to others. For just as surely as there are men who will do evil to you, it is also a fact that every one of us will fail to receive things at times we should have received. Maybe you're here today and you experienced this in your own biological family. Your father favored your brother or your sister over you. Your parents never took proper care of you. Maybe your teacher liked other students more than you. Maybe the boss slept with your coworker and she got the promotion instead of you. And now you feel resentment. You've had to struggle in life because people who should have helped you didn't help you. 
But friends, let me encourage you today. The fact is men may fail you, but Jesus never fails. Psalm 27, 10 says, When my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. For the fact is your destiny is not in the hands of people. It's in the hands of God. You may have been abandoned by your father. You may have been abandoned by your parents, but your father in heaven has never lost sight of you. You may have been overlooked in the inheritance, but you have an inheritance in Christ. You may have been left out of the opportunity, but you still have the promises of God. And when you know what God has done for you, you can overcome the stronghold of resentment for what man didn't do for you. And that brings us to the third source of resentment, what others got that I didn't get. You see, Jacob stole from Esau, Isaac withheld from Esau, and it all resulted in Jacob getting what Esau didn't get. Listen to Genesis 27, 38. Esau pleaded, but do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then Esau broke down and wept. You can likely sympathize with Esau when he broke down and wept. The bitterness of seeing someone else get what you wanted can break even the strongest among us. There's nothing worse than doing everything you thought you were supposed to do and not getting what you were supposed to get. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe you're a single young lady in the church. You've been fasting. You've been praying. You're faithful in seeking God. You're faithful in serving. You're faithful in paying your tithe. But still, no man has come. Then some girl comes into the church, and within one month, she catches a man in her first month. She's not even pretty. She's not even all that saved. She doesn't pay her tithe. She doesn't even have a tithe. She's not working. And she comes in in her first month and gets a man. It's not fair. You're trying to get pregnant. For three years, you're trying to get pregnant. Then your friend gets pregnant on her honeymoon. It's not fair. You've been working someplace for years, putting in your best effort, coming early, staying late. Then somebody comes in and gets a promotion ahead of you. It's not fair. Even in church, you might say, I've been volunteering at church for a long time. How did he come in and get a place to sing on stage when I've been here for 10 years? I used to sing in JSS. My mother says I sing good, but they never put me on stage with a microphone. It's not fair. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. There will be times in your life where you are doing everything right and somehow, Somebody else gets what you wanted. And if you're not careful to follow God fully, resentment will grow in your heart and take over your life. And here's the test for whether or not resentment has taken hold in your heart. Is there someone you secretly hope will fail? That's resentment. Is there someone that you secretly hope will look foolish? That's resentment. Is there someone anywhere you secretly hope will lose everything? That's resentment. And if you allow resentment to come into your heart, you will lose control over your destiny. Resentment will turn to bitterness and bitterness to hatred and hatred to murder. That's what happened to Esau in Genesis 27, 41. From that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme, I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. We've all had people who've done bad things to us. We all have people who failed to do good for us. We've all had things we wish we'd gotten that we didn't get. But when you don't deal with the sources of resentment, you will end up with the results of resentment. And that's our second truth today, the results of resentment. See, if you don't deal with resentment, resentment will deal with you. Three things resentment will do. First of all, what you resent 
will enslave you. The fact is, any time you allow resentment to take hold in you, you become a slave to it. You actually get in bondage to the person you resent. That's what happened to Esau. When Esau pleaded with his father Isaac to give him a blessing, eventually his father said no, and it didn't start out good. Listen to what Isaac said to Esau in Genesis 27, 39 to 40. You will live away from the richness of the earth. Hey! and away from the dew of the heaven above. Hey, you will live by your sword and you will serve your brother. He declared upon him, you will serve your junior brother. You're going to be a slave to him. As long as you resent him, you're going to end up serving him. As long as you allow hatred in your heart, you will be ensnared and enslaved to the one you hate. When you get bitter, you don't put your enemy in bondage, you put yourself in bondage. Not so long ago, I can remember something happened to me that was very, very painful. Someone did something they shouldn't have done, and I was hurt. It was late at night, and I couldn't sleep. I started thinking about what this man had done. I started getting angry. I started telling God, look at how he treated me. Look at what he said to me. Look at what he's done. Judge him, O oh God. Fire, fire, fire. Meanwhile, the person I resented was sleeping peacefully somewhere. He wasn't worried about me. He wasn't angry at me. So who was I punishing, my enemy or myself? Who was suffering, him or me? For the fact is when you relive the offense over and over, you allow the hurt to continue over and over and you get enslaved by the past. That's why Proverbs 26, 27 says, if you set a trap for others, you will get caught in it yourself. If you roll a boulder down on others, it will crush you instead. And that's the second result of resentment. What you resent will destroy you. Listen to Job 5.2. Surely resentment destroys the fool and jealousy kills the simple. That's what happened to a lady in the U.S. named Nancy Acosta. Nancy Acosta was a married woman and mother of two children living in Houston, Texas, USA. She began to suspect that her husband was cheating on her with another woman. He was rarely home. Often, he would just stop into the house to take a bath and get clothes and leave again. So one day, Nancy decided to follow her husband. When he drove off, she got into her car and followed him. And sure enough, she caught her husband picking up his mistress and driving with her into town. Nancy was so furious, hatred and resentment began to build. So she started chasing the husband down the road in her car. When she caught up to him, she started ramming her car into his. As the angry couple raced down the motorway, Nancy was smashing her car into her husband's car. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! He tried to dodge and avoid her. She was going to get even with him. She was going to punish him. But suddenly, Nancy lost control of her car. She left her lane and sped off into the other side of the road, right into the oncoming traffic. Within seconds, she was hit head on by another driver. Nancy Acosta died on the spot. Nancy's rival now sleeps in Nancy's bed, lives in Nancy's house, and controls Nancy's two children. For resentment will destroy you. It's a weight too heavy to bear. That's why Proverbs 27.3 says, A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but the resentment caused by a fool is even heavier. You start to get weighed down. Things may be going well, but instead of rejoicing, you compare. You start looking at what others have instead of rejoicing at what you have. Don't let somebody else's blessing become your curse. Don't let somebody else's joy become your sorrow. Just because your brother is blessed doesn't mean you won't be blessed. Just because someone else got married doesn't mean you won't get married. Just because someone else got a promotion doesn't mean you won't be promoted. Just because someone else got recognized and applauded doesn't mean you won't be. Just because someone else has it doesn't mean you won't. If what you don't have 
keeps you from enjoying what you do have. You have come under the yoke of resentment. For Proverbs 14.30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. And what you resent, you will begin to resemble. You will become like the person you hate. Esau resented Jacob, but he became worse than him. Jacob was a thief, but Esau was about to become a murderer. Jacob stole property, but Esau wanted to steal life. You become like the person you hate, and in fact, you become worse than him. If you resent your father because he abused you, you will likely end up being a father who abuses his children. If you resent your boss for the way he treats you, you will likely become a boss who mistreats other people. For Proverbs 30, 21 and 23 says, there are three things that make the earth tremble. No, for it cannot stand. A slave who becomes king. A rebel who prospers. A bitta woman when she finally marries. And a servant girl who marries the husband of her mistress. What makes these four types of people so dangerous? They're all people filled with resentment. A slave resents his king. A rebel resents authority. A bitta woman resents everyone else. A servant girl resents her mistress. And the earth trembles and it cannot stand these people because they resemble what they resent. They become like the ones they replaced and even worse. Resentment enslaves you. Resentment destroys you. And if you don't repent, you will soon resemble the person you resent. Fortunately, we can overcome the stronghold of resentment by the power of God. God's word makes it clear. There is a way out. And that's our third truth today, the solution for resentment. Esau was bound by resentment. He hated Jacob and wanted to kill him. But even in the face of the horrible abuse Esau suffered, God gave him a way out of the bondage. Listen to how Esau's father Isaac ends his reluctant blessing on his life. In Genesis 27, 40, he said, but when you decide, everybody say when you decide, when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. So Isaac told Esau, your brother has taken your blessing. You're under his yoke. You're going to serve him and he's going to get what you wanted. But when you decide, when you decide to break free, when you decide to give up resentment, when you decide to follow God's path, you will shake his yoke from your neck. And the same promise applies to all of us today. When you decide to throw off resentment, you will throw off bondage. Esau experienced three revelations that broke the power of resentment in this life. And you can experience it too. Here's your first revelation. Decide. I will throw off the yoke of resentment. Esau got a revelation about his own ability. He came to understand that he had the power to throw off the stronghold of resentment. We don't know when, but sometime after Jacob cheated Esau, God moved in Esau's heart and he forgave his brother. Listen to how the Bible describes their reunion in Genesis 33, 4. Then Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they both wept. When you can embrace the thing that hurt you, then the yoke of resentment is no longer on your neck. When you can buy maternity clothes for the lady who got pregnant when you have yet to conceive, it's a sign you're not under the yoke of resentment. When you can throw a party to celebrate the co-worker who got the promotion instead of you, it's a sign that you are free from the stronghold of resentment. For when you decide to break free, nothing will hold you captive any longer. And I declare somebody's breaking free in the house today. Somebody's breaking free online today. Somebody's being freed right now. So decide, I forgive anyone who did wrong to me. Decide, I release anyone who did not do good for me. Decide, I rejoice in the good others receive. For when you decide to throw off the yoke, it has to let you go. Resentment can't hold you when you decide 
decide to throw it off. And that brings us to our second solution, declare. Declare today, I have all that I need in Christ. I can do all things through Christ. See, Esau got a revelation about his own identity. He came to understand that he was complete in Christ. Resentment comes in when you think somebody else has taken your blessing. But resentment goes out when you realize that nobody, nobody can steal what you have in Jesus Christ. See, you don't need to resent what anybody has done to you because nobody can steal your destiny. You don't need to resent anybody who withheld a blessing from you because in Christ you are complete. And you don't need to resent anybody who got what you wanted because you can be content in Christ. When Esau threw off the yoke of resentment, Jacob came and offered him a large gift. He brought him sheep and goats and flocks and herds. But listen to Esau's response in Genesis 33, 9. My brother, I have plenty. Keep what you have for yourself. Think about what this means. When Esau was resentful, he was struggling to get the blessings of Jacob. He was struggling for something. He was fighting for a blessing, but he needed to realize the blessing was already his. He didn't need Jacob's gift. He had his own. He didn't need his daddy's blessing. He had a blessing from God. And some of you are filled with resentment today for what you didn't get and what your daddy didn't do for you. You're struggling with other people for your fair share. But you need to realize today that what you have in Christ is more than enough. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to fight. Your inheritance in Christ is better than anything, and no one can take it from you. So declare today, I have all that I need. If I don't have it, I don't need it. I will trust God to meet all my needs and supply all I should have. Declare out loud, I will not resent. I will be content. For 1 Timothy 6.6 6 says, True godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. So throw out that yoke and declare today, Christ is my all in all. I lack nothing because I have Jesus. And that brings us to our third solution for resentment, devote. I will devote myself to pleasing Christ and run my race. See, Esau got a revelation about his destiny. He came to understand he did not have to run someone else's race, only his own. Esau rose up and took his place as the senior brother. In Genesis 33, 12, Esau said, I will lead the way. And think about this for a minute. Esau had been rejected by his father as the firstborn, the leader of the family. But no matter what others thought of him, Esau knew who he was. He didn't need his father to tell him. He didn't need a prophet to pray over him. He didn't need to struggle with his junior brother. No matter what others did, no matter what they said, no matter how they saw him, he saw himself as God saw him. He was the senior brother and no one could take that from him. He was the leader of the family and no one could take that from him. And the same is true for you. You do not need other people to validate who you are in Christ. You are who you are and nobody can stop you. Other people may deny God's call on your life, but that doesn't make your calling any less significant or real. You are who God says you are. You are who God made you to be. Somebody say amen. And you don't need to prove it to anybody. You're a child of God. You are anointed by the Lord. You are called by God. You are loved by God. You are favored by God. You don't need applause to make your life important. You don't need followers on Facebook to make yourself necessary. When you devote yourself to Jesus, you have the applause of heaven. You have the attention of the Almighty. You have the confirmation of the Creator. You don't need man's acceptance to be special. You are cherished by God. You are loved by God. You are favored by God. You are anointed by God. You are welcomed by God. You are called by God. You are forgiven by God. And you have your own race to run. Don't live to please your dad. Don't live to please your mom. Don't live to impress your mates. Don't live to keep up with your neighbors. 
Don't live for the applause and the attention of men. Devote yourself to Jesus. Make it your aim to please him. Live for the applause of heaven and you will never be concerned about the applause of men. Be consumed with Christ and nothing else will matter to you. Run your race, for God has a special and unique trophy just for you. It's not a trophy you win by being better than others. It's not a trophy you get by being richer or stronger or faster than someone else. It's a trophy that has only one name on it. There's a trophy with one name in heaven. That name is yours. I can't win your prize, and you can't win mine. But God tells us in Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Hear the word of the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Throw off the weight of resentment. For the Bible says, consider how Jesus overcame resentment. He was mistreated, persecuted, abused, but he did not react in resentment. Even though men did not give him what he deserved, he did not grab for it and demand it. Even though at first it seemed as if he would not receive his reward, when he patiently waited on his heavenly Father, he got the greatest reward of all. So today I say to you, decide to throw off the yoke of resentment, for you have the power to be free. Declare, I will not resent, I will be content. You don't need to resent anybody else for what they have when you're trusting God for what you need. Don't let somebody else's blessing become your curse. Thank God for everything he's given you and trust him to always take care of you and devote yourself to please him. You have your own race to run. You don't need to resent anybody else for what God is doing in their lives. Focus on pleasing Jesus. Throw off the stronghold of resentment and you will achieve your destiny and prevail in victory. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break every yoke of resentment, every bitterness, every wound from the past. Lord, we lay it at your feet today. At the foot of the cross, we forgive, we release, and we look to you today, Lord, to be our strength, to be our shield, to be our comfort, to be our peace, to be our salvation. We look to you to provide us everything we need, to give us everything you desire, and to help us achieve our unique destiny as we run our own race in your presence. We look to you. Heal us. Deliver us. Break the yoke of resentment and set us free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.